we're going early. We are going early. Um, this is probably going to be an advert for a lot of people. Wow, that's got some contrast in it, hasn't it? Look at that. That has got some contrast. That needs setting up. Let's bring that down a little bit. Hey, everybody. Hope you're well. We're just going to uh, bring the ISO level down a tiny bit there. We're, um, we're getting the adverts out of the way now. That's a little bit better. Hey there, Phil. You're first. Hope that isn't a life choice. Hope that isn't a life choice. Here we go. Cool. We're good. We are good. We are good. So let's just wait for a few people to come on in. Yeah, we're live. We are live. We're early and we're live. Um, yeah. And here we are with the Creality K1 lineup. The K1 and the Max. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're well. Um, it's been a busy, busy day here. Um, lots going on. Lots of stuff. Lots of communication with Creality. And what you might have seen, and again, I reiterate this because when somebody makes a mistake or when somebody says something in particular, uh, people tend to hold on to that and get ridiculed. And then the apology is never enough um, because irreparable damage is then done. And uh, I was wrong about the Creality Cloud. Again, I'm going to say it again. I was wrong about that. And uh, I had incorrectly assumed that um, you could not send files remotely to print on your 3D printer via Creality Cloud without upgrading to the premium package, which, of course, is $80. Um, some good news, though. In addition to that, I also said that really and truly in this day and age with the quality of printers and uh, open accessibility of these online um, printers, and let's be fair, everything goes to the cloud eventually, um, it would be really, really cool if they opened it up for for a year, you know, give it to you for free. Because ultimately, you've just spent $1,000 on a printer or maybe less, um, surely this is a feature that should be opened up. So that's where we're at. And then Creative Cloud added me on Twitter today, and they tagged me in a post saying that they are offering the premium version for free. So all you need to do is go onto your Creality Cloud app, and basically there's a link that's there, and all you need to do is basically add your serial number, and you get it for free. Happy days. And that answers you into a load of different things. Um, again, some of those things I'm not immediately um, familiar with. Um, so things like Cuba coins and all that kind of stuff, that doesn't really interest me. But um, it does unlock things like different models and competitions and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's very much about their ecosystem and their community, which I think is pretty cool. Um, hello, Collie. Hello, Michael. Hello, uh, Juno. How are we doing? Um, so as you know, let's get straight on into this yet, shall we? We've gone a little bit early, but it is what it is. Um, gosh, we've got a proper setup today as well. Let me show you a couple of things. Let's move this around. Let's see if this works. Okay, so we've got nothing on that one. We've got my view on that one. We've got a top view on this one. And then we've also got a close-up view of the K1 Max there as well. We know where we're at. Um, what I will do is take the glass case off the top of this so that... Um, Put it somewhere that it's not going to get broken. Um, so when we do get that top view in, you can see the mechanism and the movement here. We did also print one of those little ghosts. I figured it'd be kind of fun to do this morning. So, uh, and then on the K1, I've just been printing benches and stuff. That's kind of what happened. Um, the murderous gnome that we had that we were printing yesterday, that was all done. I was worried that it was actually going to run out of filament. It didn't. So that's good. Another incorrect thing that I said is that Creality never put any information on their spools. However, in fact, they do. And let me show you this. So this is on the, the Hyper Series uh, spools. And again, as you can see here, there is a clear indication of how many grams you've got left or how many pounds you've got left. And um, that's pretty cool. And that's on both sides as well. Easy peasy. So um, it's funny, isn't it? Because there's a lot of times where you can assume something and actually be wrong. That doesn't have it on it. And again, that's Creality Filament. So I tend to have found myself with a couple of spools of Creality Hyper Series. Um, so 
I'm hoping that you guys are going to be able to decide on what I'm going to print next. So what I'm certainly going to do now is take out, um, we're going to show you, we're show, we'll run through this and show you what we've been printing. We're going to whip this ghost off of here as well, which if we go to number three, might be able to knock him off. Put him back up. Back, we put him, where can we put him? So you can see him. We'll hold it up in the air. There he is. Hello, hello, hello. So Halloween's just around the corner. Hey, Kate, how are you? All your tech retracted a message. Okay, don't know what that was. So that's the wrong camera angle. Apologies for that. So we've got the zoo ghost here, which again was big for Halloween last year. We do have Halloween just around the corner. So again, the murderous gnomes, the zoo ghosts, those kinds of things. Uh, you are better. I'm glad you're better. I heard that you were going through some stuff the other day and that isn't pleasant. So I'm um, sorry to hear about that. So um, moving swiftly on, I need to decide on what I'm going to print. I've got just slightly less than a kilo um, to go across both of these printers. I'm going to hit the button and press OK in Chinese still at the moment. And the next thing I'm going to do is just retract the filament that's in there. Hit the retract button. And that's going to do its thing. So the next thing I wanted to show you, of course, was this glorious V2 Benchy. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can see that. Now, the idea of this Benchy, of course, is that it is um, basically a hideaway box. So the idea will be is that you lift it up and what's inside? Yeah, look at that. It's full of Benchies. Yeah, loads of Benchies. You've got to shake it around a little bit to get it around. But I've got to be honest, that is, that's, that's really good quality. And I was really worried about because obviously we printed it like this, okay? So all of this internal part here without supports. All of the back here, no supports. It's not it's not a million dollars, but everything else is really, really sweet. So I said it before and I'll say it again. Sorry, haters. This is good. This is a good printer. I know one or two people in the community at the moment. I've gone very dark now. What's going on with this? One or two people in the community have had a few issues with these printers. It could be down to anything. And uh, it was something I was thinking about on my way into work this morning. Um, you know, I saw one delivery being made where the guy literally had his printer being delivered as they were turning the box over and rolling it up the pathway. Between China, then packing it into a lorry, then packing it into a container, it going onto a ship, the shipping company then delivering it to the dock, the dock then delivering it to wherever it needs to go to at that point, a collection point or whatever. Maybe it's manhandled that point. How many of these things are potentially being dropped? Mine came in a, um, a protective box, which is a wooden box, and then the box was inside the box, and everything was very, very well packaged. But I am seeing one or two um, sort of front glasses that have been smashed. Again, that's the same in other brands as well. It's not just specific to Creality. Um, and ultimately, if they're not being handled particularly well, I think the skew on the gantry is probably some of the some of the main issues that's going on there. But, you know, again, it's I, I don't necessarily think anyone should think that Creality's business model would be something as acutely inaccurate as saying, you know what, we're going to print. We're going to make a bad printer. So everybody gets really annoyed at that. They're not in the business of that. So. You know, we're seeing a few issues. Unfortunately, with those people, they do tend to shout the loudest. So all the good quality stuff that we're hearing about, potentially you might not see. And I'm a firm believer, actually, that I think that these printers are actually pretty damn good. And um, if you don't have a good one, sorry about that. But I will also say that, you know, we've been down a road together already, as you know. The first K1 that I got had a number of issues, and that was to do the extruder and the nozzle. Um, but since then, and since the repairs have been done, we're all good in the hood. And that printer's just over in the corner there. And in fact, bizarrely enough, it's powering my new camera, which you're looking at me through right now. So happy days all around at the moment. So let's have a look. Oh, there's lots and lots of messages here. Hey, hey, hey. How about printing a uh, death tread stroke wheels? That's a pretty good idea. Um, is that the murderous gnome from 3D, uh, uh, 3D Sculpts? I think it is. 
Uh, I paid, it was on Colts, I paid like £1.50 for it. It's pretty cool though. So I'm going to take it. Here we go. So we're just extruding now. Again, on the top of this, there is a clip. It's on the same, same on the K1 and the K1 Max. Basically, you feed, you push through the filament through to, um, through to this point here, and then you can then see it basically turning on the back here, and then it does a grab. You can feel that on the back. Again, one of the big issues, I suppose, um, that you could pick out on this is, well, you know, you have to load it from the back, but this is 3D printing at the end of the day, right? So let's extrude a little bit more out of here. The good news, of course, with 3D printing is that you can make other stuff. So if you wanted to put a spool holder on the side, in fact, Creality do have a spool holder as a model on here. So I want to print something a lot bigger though. So we're extruding now. Here we go. That's happy. Happy, happy, happy. We've just finished a bench on this one. And let's see if we can go for that. There we go. We're extruding nicely there. Let's just catch up on a few messages here. The K1 Master, great print. Hey, John, uh, UPS, yeah. Hey, Nonstick, how you doing? Um, thanks, Phil, appreciate that. I wish Creality would open source these faster. Okay, interesting. Uh, I agree with you, sadly not positive about the printer early on, but I've changed my view after I got one. The Max is coming for me very soon. Cool, I mean, listen, that's, that's really good. Hate loading from the back. Yeah, it's, it's, that's the wrong button. I keep pressing the wrong button. Keep pressing the wrong button. I do apologize. So let's get rid of the, um, let's get rid of this little line here and we'll get rid of the, chuck it on the floor. We've got some uh, 3D lac, little push onto that. Let me know in the comments what you think I should print. Uh, another bench is just finished in here. I was just using up some filament really more than anything else. There was no real ideal test for the, uh, for the K1. But as you can see here, as we've gone through a motion of different colors there. And um, again, that's what we printed. That's what we printed yesterday. You would have seen that on the, um, would have seen it on the show we did yesterday. Again, I'm, I'm really happy with that. It looks good. Uh, and then on the K1, a couple of days ago, I printed out this. And uh, the lower part here, the white actually is in ABS. So if you're wondering, oh, does the enclosure work? Is it any good? Yeah, it's good. And this is PLA on the top. And that was done on just on the standard K1. And I'll show you again, just in case you've just joined. This is what we printed overnight last night. This was an 11 hour print. This is the Benchy V2. It's a kind of stash box. And inside, of course, we have a load of Benchies. Um, T3D, I'm guessing that's where, um, where we downloaded it from. Somebody suggested we print one of these yesterday. And that's exactly what we've done. And I've got to be honest, it was printed like this. That's just insane. Absolutely insane. Really good. Really, really good. I'd expect nothing less. And then I decided that in the times I was waiting to do this this morning, I figured we'd print this little uh, zoo ghost. This was big for Halloween last year. Everybody had these, all the, all the content creators out there. So that's that as well. Happy day. So we're going to get ready to print something. Um, I'm going to extrude the uh, let's retract this now as well let's get rid of that so again i've got two spools of uh hyper pla here hyper series pla from creality we've just loaded this first one up um but yeah we could um we could do a secondary one i'm going to read your comments in just a second because i saw a very interesting one then uh where are we going to put that do we put three in the corner one in the corner how do we make that work? Is that just off input one? I don't know. This is how professional things have got now, guys. There I am. Hello. Sure. So let's have a look at the comments. See what we got. I wish uh, Creality would open source these faster. So do I. Um, and the other interesting thing that I got from a lot of people yesterday was uh, what are Creality doing regarding the LiDAR detection and how does that work? So I reached out to them last night. They Come back to me this morning. In fact, there's a few messages here. One of the questions was around. Bum, 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 bum. Bear with me. Oh, the first question was around the camera output. It's a 1080p camera, but through Creality Cloud, it displays at 720. Um, it's a 1280 by 720. I think they mean 1080, um, but it's it's 720p. 
Now, weirdly, last night, and I said said in the stream yesterday. Um, by the way, so this is through. And I can show you here without messing stuff up. This is this is the um, the printing software. This is the Creality Print software. Again, it's very Clipper esque, but it's inside of a program, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. So yesterday, as I said this before, we, when we were doing the tests, because Creality ultimately wanted me to ensure that um, the printer could print something of my choice in China, um, we had a little test. And I want to show you the photo, but I can't necessarily show you the photo on here because of the way that um, everything's set up right now. But I will show you this. Bear with me. So this is in... I'm not sure if I can show you, if I'm allowed to show you this, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Okay, so this, this here is the Creality Lab. And as you can see here, obviously that's inside a Creality K1, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven printers there um, in, their, in their studio, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. And um, yeah, I was watching what they were doing with, with that. They gave, me, they gave me some access to have a look at that. And that's pretty cool. All your tech. Wow. Thank you for supporting me, dude. I really appreciate that. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is it's a learning curve for me because in some respects, I don't know what I'm doing necessarily. And I've gone quite dark all of a sudden again. Let's see if we can get that ISO level back up. So I've got a new camera. Um, this is the camera that I'm going to be taking on my maiden voyage um, to China. If you didn't already know, I am going to China. So that's going to be fun. Let's move this in a little bit. So I've got to learn all about it before that happens, of course. So what was I saying? Anyway, let's move that out. Let's get rid of that. Sure. So open sourcing. Sam is a vampire, hates the light. I do. Uh, the K1 Max. I do have the K1 Max. Now, it's sort of a, yeah. Texture PI bed, absolutely 100% for the win on this. Again, um, I've not. This is day three or day two and a half, I suppose. Started it a couple of nights ago. Monday night, I think, is when this arrived unboxed it, did all that kind of crazy stuff. Hey, 3DP UK, thank you for the membership there. Again, I don't know a lot of what this stuff means, but um, it's going some way to support me, so I do appreciate that. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. We've just hit 14K in subscribers as well, so I'm super stoked about that. And in addition to that, we are giving away a bunch of stuff at the Death Races show at the East Coast Rep Rep Festival. If you don't know what the Death Races is, on Facebook there is a builders group called the Death Races. If you check out my YouTube as well, You'll find a load of information. They're basically 3D printed battle bots and uh, somehow, some way, in a really crazed vortex, we've managed to kind of cobble a lot of companies together and get some really fantastic backing. So we are giving away, with Creality, a Creality K1 Max at that show. So if you want to be in it to win it, the Death Racer is basically, I've got one here. We're building this one at the moment. Uh, this is a modified version, but... Ultimately, the idea in the name of the game is there's a little rider that sits up here. You normally have some kind of weapon, which is maybe on the back or possibly the front. The guy sits in here. It's fully RC controlled, so you use your, um, you use your RC controller to obviously make it work. And there's a ton of different designs on that. But um, there's probably, I would say, five to maybe more, maybe like 10 grand's worth of investment that... Um, various companies have basically put in for their prize funds. So uh, Big Tree Tech are involved, um, Bamboo Lab, Creality, all those guys are all kind of involved with this. So that's really, really cool. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, Tripod, you came up with that joke yesterday, pal. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Am I talking to Matt German, Sam? I have talked to, his, to him about his trip, but I'm not going with the people that he's going with. I'm actually doing a completely different thing. Um, because the deal wasn't juicy enough for me. I've got to be honest. Um, happy to talk about that offline, though. What else have we got going on here? Uh, ba -ba -ba have you played with getting LiDAR working? Right, that was the next thing. So the first thing was uh, the camera quality. Now, the camera quality streaming, so when I'm at home and I'm looking at the printer from home on Wi-Fi or 4G or 5G or whatever it is, actually, the quality is really, really good. And I'd say it's better than their competitor's camera. Um, certainly from even at 720, uh, the refresh rate is much more much more flowing. And um, that's not just for mine. That was also for the one that I was watching in China um, last night as well. Uh, that's a good decision not going with him. It is a good decision not going with him. 100%. 
So in regards to the LIDAR, that was the second question that I posed to Creality. Let's just see if anyone's come back to me yet. They gave me all the information about bed leveling and what the laser is for, when it scans, how it scans. But so far, guys, during, during the upload of this, I haven't managed to get it to scan anything. And but one, of the, one of the weird things, I suppose, about 3D printing in general, wow, it's gone really lightning now, hasn't it? So I've got a window just up here. And that being the case, um, I'm having some issues with light control. So we're overexposed a little bit at the moment, but I don't think as we're printing anything, it really matters. Never mind, it's all good. So long story short, um, is I still am not fully aware of exactly how that works um, and when it scans or when it's supposed to scan. The other thing I've noticed as well, while this is doing pretty much nothing, it's very, very loud. So the K1 is certainly louder than the K1 Max. I'm going to guess and take a real hazard guess that it's going to be a firmware-related thing where these fans are kicking in when they needn't do. Um, but there you go. So very impressed with these printers so far. I'm not going to lie about it. It is what it is. You, if you know me, you know you know exactly how I stand with these things. And if I did have a problem with it, obviously I would be telling you exactly what that problem was, maybe what the company needs to do to resolve it. But so far, things have been very, very good. And in addition to that, people have been reaching out and asking me questions and um, even getting some you know, various levels of support as well from uh, Creality as well, which, is, which, has, been, which has been handy. Um, uh, anyone else going out of sync with Sam in the stream and me talking? Wonder if it's catched up now. Has it caught up? Hopefully it's all right. So what am I printing? Tell me what I'm going to print. So 300, 300 by 300 on the K1 Max, and we've got 220 by 220 on the standard K1. So I would very much like to print something big on this. Uh, we've got a kilo on each to play with. And what are we printing? Let me know. A torture toaster, come on. Print a helmet, what helmet? Drop a link. Drop a link in, let me know what you, a Mando helmet. Iron Man. I've got an Iron Man helmet here. Right here. Literally right here, which you can't see because the uh, exposure's all blown out. Oh, my days. Let's see if we can set this up a bit better. There's always something every time. Every time. Right, see how that looks. That's a little bit better. We've also managed to get most of the ceiling in here as well. Let's cut off the aperture. Two seconds, I've just seen somebody tag something there. Let's just squeeze this in a little bit so you're not seeing everything that's in the background, which doesn't matter. You don't need to see it. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do anything up to a 24 hour print. And I'm gonna run this through the night. I'll do some updates on uh, the old Twitter, if you're interested. Uh, Ram Online, I saw your video, uh, if that Creality goes to the far left in the back, cable chain pops something out. Linked it in my video. Hang on a minute, what's this? Yeah, print an R2 dome. You need 465 by 465 to do an R2 dome. I uh, saw so your video where the Creality goes to the far left back, cable train pops or something happens there. I linked it in your video. These ones are on okay at the minute. This one is a little bit touchy, over familiar with the, um, with the rod. Um, but I mean, there is a bit of adjustment in there. But yeah, it may well have done. It might have been when I was filming a sequence or something that might have happened. Um, again, at the minute. No real issues. World's biggest chip cube. I, I'm sure someone's done a bigger one than 300, 300, right? Surely. Creality is sending me a message. 
Okay, so there is a red light showing it's scanning. This is to do with the LiDAR. Ask the question, when does that happen? Tripod cube. <laughs> if you look at the video, I put a timestamp in there and it looks like it gets worse. Okay, let me, um, let me have a look at that. These ones, incidentally, the cable, tra cable trains on all of these are absolutely fine. So that might have been the um, might have been when I was filming with the version one, which again I kind of feel like that was a pre-release. It's good as gold now, um, but I do feel like that first printer they sent me was a was a bit of a uh, pre-release version. A tripod cube. You have one on fangs. All right. Let's have a look on fangs. I'm betting there's not a tripod cube though. Ah oh, dear. A mega Lego like skeleton. Send me some links. I do like the check cube. That'd be kind of cool. I want to do something like this. Something big. Something big. Maybe a bit bigger. Keeping it with the Halloween theme. Okay. Well, the other thing I've got is a. I'm gonna. I want to do redo my saw puppet, my cycling robotic saw puppet. Um, but this isn't. That isn't really for this. I want to show. Really, what I want to try and show you guys is, you know, how big a model you can make on this thing. Um, Uh, so wonder how I wonder how Matt German went on his way to China. Um, I can tell you exactly how that happened. Um, there's a company out there at the mo moment that are doing a fan fest, and they were asking for particular fans of that company to go to China. Um, to be honest, I think it's pretty fishy. And when somebody wants you to do something, ultimately there needs to be a return on investment for that company. Um, it is what it is. I'm going to do. Oh, OK. Fat rig. Now, I do remember you now. Do you mean rat rig, not fat rig? Scale down a mini R2 zone. Yeah, and do what with it, though? I mean, at least at least the bench has a purpose, right? Um, the murderous gnomes have a purpose because I, I could just freak my neighbor out. Should I do like a big murder? Mur should I do a 300? Um, murderous nine. Oh, it's huge and beefy, so you call it fat rig. Got it. I thought it was like a dyslexic typo or something. <laughs> Come on, guys! I need to get this print in. I want to push this out as quick as we can. Uh, let me go into prepare and also then get onto the K1 profile. That's now done. And I should be able to print by the land for this. Creative message me again. Uh, turn on turn on the camera settings. There, is, there are AI control. Okay. There are AI control. Well, let's have a look at that then. Let's go into the camera settings on this. And see what we can find. Cooling settings, uh, camera. So in there, we've got camera settings, enable time lapse, which does work really well. AI function. Okay, so motion advance. Okay, this is interesting. So this is so we've got AI detection in optimization. Uh, abnormalities in printing can be detected by the AI during the printing process. First layer detection, and this is a tick box, printing pause due to faults with that switched on. Motion advanced, supports Creality print only. Okay, so that is now on. So what we should see when we start this print, whatever we end up printing, and right now, unless someone gives me a better idea, I'm gonna do one of these murderous gnomes. Oh, thank God that's gone off, that was loud. Whoa, here we go. Okay. 
hey, leave us dyslexic people alone. No, I was just saying it was, um, he kept calling it fat rig. And I was like, is that like a major typo or is that, I don't know. You like that Benchy? That's cool, man. Do a giant gnome. Okay, the giant gnome is going to happen unless somebody tells me different. What do I spray into the machine? Um, it's how many times? I mean, I'm almost feeling like tripod repeating the same joke after the time. It's the um, it's the last four years of Creality's customers' tears inside of a bottle, and I spray that onto the um, I spray that onto the bed to keep everything adhered together. No, it's a product called 3D Lac. Um, I know some of you guys might have seen the glue sticks everyone seems to be using at the moment. I don't use that. I use a thing called 3D Lac. And especially when I'm doing a big print like this massive uh, V2 Benchy, I wanted to make sure that wasn't going to come off the bed. And um, the release agent in there is very, very good. I've used it for years, probably three, three years, four years plus. Um, before that, we used to use hairspray and used to head it was pretty awful because it would just go over all the components, but just a little spray of that just onto the bed and it works really, really well. How big, how big is the bed on the max? Uh, the bed on the max is 300, 300 by 300. Um, Rock'em Sock'em Battle Bar. <laughs> Optimus Prime Bus, Cali Dragon. Right, so we had the Cali Dragon thing yesterday. What I will do then, let me put the Cali Dragon on this one and then we do... We do the big name on this one. How about that for a deal? Just bought some 3D back, black. Uh, looking forward to trying it out. Yeah, 300, 300 on this bed. So, do, 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 do. Okay, so let's do the name first then. Nothing quite as refreshing as putting murderous into your uh, 300. Three hundred scale up, and what we do then is if I do this, what I'll then do is I'll do a video of me on TikTok putting it outside my neighbor's house on Friday and trying to get a reaction from him. The problem with this print though is that the hat is really tall. So it's not quite going in. 170. Nope. 150. So that'd be 150%. So it's only 50% bigger than this. So uh -huh. Clock spring has some vases I could print. Yeah, I don't really fancy any clock spring prints today, to be honest. I'm trying to keep it on theme for Halloween for next month. Um, well, look, let's go murderous gnome for this one then. It's not really filling up the bed though. I'll tell you what, why don't I do two murderous gnomes on that bed? Then we can then look at things like retraction and stuff like that. One and two. Okay, let me just slice this up real quick. And Okay, so the shell is going to be three. The infill is going to be 10. Uh, we're going to change it to... Lightning. Yeah. Let's do triangles and do 8% infill. Save. Okay. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to hit the slice button now. And if I was able to share my screen, I would love to do that. So you can see exactly how thrilling this next part is. Well, I don't mind doing a Venom Groot. Let's have a look. Sorry, let's go through this again. Venom Groot uh, on the max. Oh, come on. Let's have a look at this Venom Groot then. Where is it? Can you send me the link? Uh, 
Uh, Venom Groot, 3D print. Is it a CG trader thing? Random XY has a bat skull. Um, yeah, Ram, Ram Online, we spoke about this yesterday. So the, the side ones are, I think, 10, and these, uh, so that's the Y, and then on the X, they are 12s, I believe. Um, but they're the same on the Max as well as the uh, K1 standard. Come on, chaps, I need to know where this, where this file, this Venom Group thing is. Because uh, I cannot see it. I can see it on Etsy. I can see it on... Um, Chibi STL collection, is that what it is? Let's have a look. It's funny how everyone's gone quiet now, right? The rocket from the Creality commercial. I haven't, I'm not familiar with that. I'm not familiar with that one. Again, link it, link it, then we can, then we can just print it. It's easy. It's easy. Easy. So interestingly enough, the, um, the murderous, uh, prints here are 415 grams, which is more than enough on that. And it's 11 hours and 137 meters. Oh, thanks, Tripod. Spaceballs helmet. <laughs> oh, it's awful though, isn't it? And it's it, it would need to be massive. It's funny, isn't it? Everyone keeps going on about Venom Groot. And nobody says a thing. I assume you print in something other than PLA today. Um, okay. Well, we can print in something other than PLA tomorrow because I've just loaded the printers up. If you'd said that before, I could have just done whatever. We could have done it in ASA. We could have done it in Pet G. We could have done. We could have done it in anything. We could have done it in a whole host of things. I've got carbon fiber stuff down here. I've got ABS. I've got. I've got. You know, we've got we've got the filaments. Yeah, I only see Venom Groot. Hey, Gail, how you doing? Right, guys. I'm going to give it, let's give it a countdown. I'm just going to hit the button because otherwise we're going to be here all day. And I have got 30 more minutes of this stream before I've got to go off and have a meeting. So if we don't get it done in the next few seconds, I'm going to hit the button and hopefully it'll print. So I'm going to get a countdown. I'm pushing the button. Full send, that's it, we're doing it. Right, we're hitting the land printing button, we are hitting confirm. All we do then is we basically click a checkbox that says K1 Max, and then it says one click printing. I bet they're messing around again. As soon as I try and do anything live, for whatever reason, 
it then has a meltdown. There's the K1 Max, I can see the K1 is That is so weird. No, nope, it's doing it. It's uploading. It is uploading, my friends. Nonstick, send me, send me the link to the file. I'll buy the file. Hey, Selma, how you doing? Send me the file. I'll print it on, I'll print it on one of these. Um, we need, hang on, Seamus has now sent me something. I uh, can't send the link. Hang on. So Seamus has sent me a link on Facebook to something on Fangs, which is a bat skull. So we're going to download that as well. One of the most, oh, dude, I've got to be a member to download it. Come on. Nice and easy. I need this to be nice and easy, guys. So here we go. So we are 94% uploaded. I'm going to change the camera angle. Hopefully, and I say hopefully, we're going to see some... Uh, how is your upload with stream uh, full line? Because your buffer on my side has got high speed. Uh, how is your upload with stream not full line? I don't understand what you mean, mate. So here we go. So maybe, just maybe, this time, hey, hey, maybe we will see that LiDAR doing its stuff this time. Let's see what happens. Now, we've got to get something cracking on the K1 as well. So your suggestions are whatever they are. Let's, let's do something. Um, we're going to do the murderous gnomes on this again. Um, can it be your upload is on Mac streaming, Sam? It could be. What you mean in regards to sending stuff by the LAN? Possibly. Yeah, that's a shame I couldn't download that. That looks quite cool, actually, that bat thing. I'm not I'm not in a position just to start purchasing stuff to print right this second. Um, I'll tell you what I do have. Pretzel Prince does have that skull combo, uh, which is like a dice tower. I have already printed it on a different printer, though. Um, Food for thought. Uh, print that tea light from above in ASA. What tea light? So that's knocked that little bit of filament off there. Right, we're kicking in. Let's push the buttons. Let's see what happens this time because we're, we've now got the setting switched on thanks to Creality, on hopefully scanning the print and scanning the LiDAR on this. So fingers crossed. You can print that with or without the handle. Sorry, Michael. Um, check the mug. Where's the mug? Where are you sending this? Okay, we're moving on in. Even I'm excited. Here we go, Jacko Lantern. Hey Dan, hope you're well, man. Trying to do like 10 things at once here. Let's have a look at the Jacko Lantern. That looks kind of cool. We can do that. Um, let's do the one with the hat. Let's do the one with the handle. Oh, I've got to log in. No, we don't. We're all good. Okay. I'm really curious to see if this does a scan. Mm. 
Oh, I hope your daughter's all right, dude. That jack-o'-lantern's pretty cool, actually, isn't it? Right, we are getting ready to do something, uh, and I really want to watch this live on the stream. I didn't see it do a single scan. Maybe it'll do a scan after the first layer. What do you think? Okay, so on the max then, what we're going to do now, uh, let's get rid of the let's get rid of the gnomes, which again I am going to hide in my neighbor's garden. So check out TikTok on that if you uh, if you want to see that reaction. He's a nice guy actually. I just like pranking him. So the jack o' lantern is the one we're going to be putting on the other printer, the standard K1. And let's pop that in. That is quite a big print, actually, isn't it? That is only just fitting. I'm going to, have to turn him around a little bit. I need to get my uh, OBS sorted out so you guys can uh, understand what I'm looking at here. So now let's whip up some information on that. That's cool, though, isn't it? I wonder how. I wonder if how well that's going to print. That's cool. Okay, so we're um, I'm going to cancel that for a moment. Let's hit the slice button. Yeah, I'm just going to try and print that straight up. I think. Just thinking about it. Hot and fan is not running. Um, I don't think it needs to on the first layer. I love my K1, still not happy how it's played out. That's the, um, you're the issue around, you've got the issue around close source, right? I think they're going to open it up. I've got a good, I've got a good feeling that it's going to happen quite soon. There you go, Broski, Snowski, love that name. No cooling for the first three layers. Again, you can set that in the slicer anyway. What my main concern was about was how it's going to scan and if it's going to scan. And it didn't appear to scan. So a little bit more work I think I'm going to need to try and figure out exactly what went on with that. Um, as soon as it's open, I'll be much happier. I think everyone will be, mate. I think, you know... Put it, put it is, put it in your perspective, and I and I have to, I have to say it like this: is what if I'm slightly out of sync? I think, apologies. Um, put it in perspective: if you just launched a new project, product out into the marketplace, and you knew categorically, let's say, let's say, let's, let's take a different example. Let's say you put a 3D printer into a school, okay, and there are a 20, 30 Dans in a class, right? And they all want to mess around a little bit with Clipper. Then by the end of the class, potentially the printer might not work again. So imagine launching a product, sending, I don't know, 10,000 units out into the, into the world market, and then somebody having a problem because they've messed up and then they want to send the printer back. I, I completely, completely understand why potentially they would not want to do that on day one. And I'm not saying they're doing that because of that reason, but I, I do I do have a firm belief that if somebody breaks something and it is their fault, then it's their fault. And I think if you look at, if you look back and you, if you map this back on how this has all played out, things have gone wrong. Things have gone wrong for me, as you know, and then it's gone back to the engineers. The engineers have then kind of worked out what it could be. And then, you know, I was, I was like that. I was, you know, I was like, well, you know, just send me the hot end of an extruder. We, we, it'll be fixed. And their argument was, well, what if that has damaged something else? What if it's damaged the bed? So I'll plug all this new stuff in and I won't be any further forward. So it's a case of, I don't know, it's, it's a mentality thing, I think, where I think we've just 
got to chill out a little bit and understand that there are things that are working. They don't want this to fail. This is their flagship printer. I've got to be honest, I think it's pretty damn good. So, uh, yeah, totally. What I'd love to see is uh, eventually when they do open it up is possibly like a three-tier, you know, um, expert mode, standard mode, school mode, something like that. So you can get into certain things. But at the moment, you see, we don't understand anything about the LiDAR and how the LiDAR integrates with this. So that would be interesting from a technical point of view. It'd be interesting to know how that actually works rather than it being put over here and we're not able to find out what that information is. That would be, that would be very, very interesting. Please provide the source. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm the uh, the GP V3 license situation is, um, you know, it's questionable. Of course it is. Um, but I've got no skin in the game. And that is such an important thing. There's a lot of people kicking off and crying and jumping up and down and saying, well, this shouldn't happen and that shouldn't happen. But they're not Kevin from Clipper. They're not the big boss from the compliance manager from Creality, that's, we're, we're the community. So, you know, I'm not saying it's particularly right, but at the same time, I think there's a lot that we get involved with that potentially we maybe have no business in. Um, and I'm only saying that because if it was me and I was in that situation, maybe I would have handled it differently, but it's not me. So... Now, here's, a, here's an interesting fact. I've now got to remember which printer is on. And at the moment, because I've got two K1s in this room and they're connected to the same network, let's change that to 50. And then that will give me some indication as to what is going on here. And we can have a look. Got an error on one of them at the minute. I don't know what that's to do with. Let's scan. See what we get in. Meanwhile, while we're doing that, let's have a look at some of these crazy angles. As you can see, currently we're printing the feet. Those prints are really nice, but it doesn't look like it from that video it looks like it's a bit scabby but it's actually not it's actually really nice um let's have a look see what we've got here uh there's a credit myself who doesn't who doesn't own a creality hi everyone hey matt hey matt uh i'm almost through my creality in done several times till i used it with proof slicer and it's still running on ps okay uh, if you get it right, it's, the, it's a nice step forward. Um, do we need to send them back down to Creality, mate? I spoke to her the other day. Um, I've got quite a good relationship with Naomi, actually. She, she's a cool cat. Um, but she's got some stuff going on. That is, um, it's not nice at all. Not nice at all. So, um, fortunately, I don't think you'll be seeing Naomi Wu doing anything with anybody for a little while, which is a shame. Right, let's just get this going. Time is of the essence. I think I am now heating up the wrong printer. Yes, I am. <laughs> Typical. So hot end of 50. Might have to do a reboot on this one because I've lost the connectivity of it. Let's see if we do a manual ad. So when you go into this, again, I think, like I say, it might be because I'm streaming on the same computer. If we go into network, it'll give you the IP address, uh, which is 192.168.1.21, which I can see, manual ad, 192.168.1.21. Book 21, add. 
So at the moment, it's flickering. I don't know why. Let's slice the file, stick it in, see what happens. Let's go land print, let's confirm. Okay, we're gonna send the print now. Fingers crossed we should be okay. What else have we got here? Uh, is there any screen action on the Max's screen? Can't see it from here. What screen action would you like to see? What kind of screen action are you expecting? Currently, currently, the screen... Oh, I've missed a phone call. Currently, the screen shows nothing because it's in normal nighttime mode. When you hit the button, there we go, you can see. So at the moment, what you can see is what it's printing, which are these murderous notes. Currently, it's going to be 0%, but it has been printing for 10, now 11 minutes. It shows you the fan, it shows you the light, it shows you the temperature, and it shows you the um, temperature of the bed, as well as um, the temperature of the, of the internals there. Um, and as this goes along, as the bar goes along, you'll also see what position the print will be in. So it will basically go from gray to kind of being highlighted, which um, again, this screen, the screens on these look really, really nice. And um, as I say, depending on where you sit on your um, requirements, I know, for example, Jerry really doesn't like the screen of the P1P as a good example. But the K1 series do have exactly the same screen. So it doesn't really matter what you get, if you get the K1 or if you get the K1 Max, what you might want to invest in, though, is a uh, screen cleaner, especially if you have um, mucky hands like I appear to be having at the moment. So there we have it. Uh, what else can I show you? Let's show you from above here. Did it scan with LiDAR? It did not appear to scan with LiDAR. No. Good around. How happy is that? So you, Kate, good luck. Take care. See you soon. I uh, have to go to the kiddo. Okay, we're kicking off now. We're starting to make some moves. And now the, just to the Jerry satisfaction, I will just show you the fan has now kicked in. Um, I think that was the second or third layer that that kicked in on. So what I'm trying to show you here, guys, is, you know, essentially usability of the printer. I think it's all right showing... And this is something I'm, I've been working with for a little while now is that it's all right showing people, hey, this is how you unbox a printer. If you don't know how to get something out of a box by now, guys, come on. Come on, please. Let's think about this. We know how to get stuff out of boxes. It's, it's, been, it's been happening for a long time. And what I wanted to show, and part of these streams, and I will do a video. I'm going to do a video on um, probably on the both of these printers. I'm going to do something a little bit different and talk about the Creality ecosystem, talk about the Creality cloud. Um, second Jerry was watching. <laughs> uh, good day. Thanks for the gift to the kind person. Uh, hello, Mecca Steve. Hope you're well. Thanks for subscribing as well. If you don't already like and subscribe, please do so. Uh, it helps the channel. It helps me. It's evolved together. Let's try and give you some stuff back as well. Also, I don't know if you saw last night, but um, uh, Nathan from Nathan Builds Robots, nice guy, met him at Murph. Um, weirdly, when I did a stream yesterday, I did this kind of like phone up in the air, kind of demonic, weird face looking thing. He did the same. And then I said to Denise today, STL Denise, she does a lot of work working and writing for Tom's Hardware. Um, I'm now carrying Nathan's uh, screenshot around with me, uh, although it's not focusing particularly well. There it is. I'll show you on a show you on a different camera. I'm now carrying Nathan's card around with me, um, mainly because I think I'm funny. Here we go. There it is. Mainly because I think I'm funny, and uh, secondary because Nathan's a cool guy, and he also has a K1 Max and a K1, so. Definitely, if you're looking to buy one of these and you're trying to find 
a solution for you. And of course, that solution will probably be around the whole issue around, should I buy this or should I buy something else? Uh, there's all those dilemmas. Well, this is bigger, but that one does 16 color printing. This one does this, this one does this. At this point in time, it's a really tricky one because it's going to very much depend on what you are printing. And, you know, exactly the same words that will go into my review is that the other companies or certainly one other company has put a lot of time and effort into development of materials and ensuring their ecosystem works really well. Whereas Creality, they've got a long checkered pass of good stuff and potentially not so, not so good stuff that's happened. Um, but again, I think the max over the K1 is certainly going to be the one to go for uh, in regards to that kind of print volume and print size. And to be fair with you, it's not, it's a big printer, but it's not colossal. Certainly if you take like a bed slinger where you need to have that margin to whack the bed backwards and forwards, um, it's actually... I can't really complain, to be honest with you. What I'd like to see is a couple of things like, oh, you can actually maybe modify this panel. You can put the spool on the side. Maybe put the spool on the top. Whatever. Um, but, yeah, I think I think once the community gets their hands on this, um, I think we're going to see some pretty radical uh, changes, and I'm very, very hopeful for that. So there you go. Any questions at this point um, that's not about LiDAR? This is cool. Let's hand, so and see what's going on with the other one now. Um, 21. What's going on? Why is why aren't we printing yet? Oh, we're still uploading. Strangely, though, the printer is literally going on, off, on, off, on, off, and that's on the land settings. That's really peculiar. Again, it might be because some abnormality in me streaming but uh the max is obviously working really well i'm just wondering if i do a reboot on the printer let's just see if it's actually heating up or doing anything at the moment <laughs> nothing right let's switch him off and back switch him back on again and see if uh it's something to do with the wi-fi again i did say yesterday that i have quite a lot of wi-fi connected devices in this one room um eight bamboos three creality printers four creality printers that are on wi-fi um and a couple of other devices my laptop my phone a bunch of other stuff that's in the building um so it could be could be something to do with that let's chuck it again see what we get let's hit land printing and see where we go from now incidentally this is a 15 hour print so this one's going to be an 11 hour print this one's a 15 hour print just check back. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Tim. Uh, digging the bed heater. Let's have a look. Yeah, Tim's back. Um, is it a worker's gym breakfast? I'm guessing that you're going to crack a couple of eggs, whisk them up, down in one, and then it's down to the gym to, to get those muscles going. I hope that's the case. Mercus Steve, hope you're well. I hope things are good. Now, this is really odd. So I can't really show you this. Um, I'm going to film it because we're doing this live. Creality, why is it doing this? Why is this happening? So what we've got, just to explain, you've basically got where you prepare your model, you've got the preview of your model, and then it goes on to your device settings. And at the moment, I've got, oh, I've got three devices listed, and the bottom device, which is this one, is basically flickering gray. So it goes live gray, live gray, live gray, live gray, live gray, and it keeps doing that. Um, and I don't know why. So maybe that's for tomorrow's stream, if we do a stream tomorrow, of course. What I'm gonna do meanwhile, though, is I'm gonna copy it straight to that was weird. That said, USB drive pops up. I don't know what that means. 
USB drive pops up. We're going to copy it to the USB drive here um, because for whatever reason, that ain't working. No name and save. But this is good, though, I suppose, because if you're seeing the problems I'm having here and it's live and, you know, it's very, very different when you start messing around with a, um, a pre-edited video. Do you know me? <laughs> Grant says he missed you yesterday, uh, was here today. Grant. Oh, Grant, right, um, Freedom Musketeer. Between your streams yesterday and his, uh, you bought one yesterday. Flyer 007. Awesome. I think you're going to have a good time. Did you go for the Max or did you go for the standard K1? Let me know. Let me know. Hey, that's done. Just making sure that's definitely copied across. That was easy. So export to a USB. It's actually quite nice for a change, not to be um, messing around with... Hey, Carlos, hope you're well. Thanks for the weird emojis. Can't decide on the QD3 Max and the K1 Max what's best for the money. Well, um, the 3 Max doesn't have any form of connectivity outside of your LAN. So it does have clipper on it, and it is a stock standard clipper, which, of course, Dan will be really, really happy with. I do have that printer here. It's actually in the back room. Um, but it's going to be down to very much what you want to print again it's got a 320 by 320 build volume on that one uh, on this one it's a 220 or a 300 so again i don't necessarily believe what's going on here got something really weird happening with this machine so i'm almost into a i think i might have a bug here so this is machine starting and it keeps going round into a... That would explain why that's messing around, right? Machine starting. Hang on a minute. Let's get my phone out. Reality, why is this happening? Oh dear, let's do another reboot then and see if we can get this working. That's really strange. You have me on the big TV, awesome. Hey, what's going on? I'm in Las Vegas, live on Jerry's TV. How awesome is that? Hello, time to go, hope you're well. Um, so this is the update at the moment. Over on this printer right here, as you can see from the top, we are whizzing around on the Creality K1 Max, again, 300, 300 by 300 bed size. Um, we have a Core X wire structure. This is the latest and greatest from Creality. And on my left-hand side, which I am now currently rebooting, we have got, ah, uh, you know what? You know what it might be? I think... What the hell? I think maybe I didn't set the parameters right and it's misreading. Let's have a look, see what we could have found. So it sounds like there's quite a few people buying these at the moment, which I think is a sound investment, to be completely honest with you. Um, bear with me. Let's go to prepare again, just double check that. No, I did set that right. Turns out I know what I'm doing, right? Okay, let's try the land printing again, because it seemingly seems to be... Hey, well, okay, here's the thing now. So right now, we are now printing by the land. This has gone out the window. I'm going to ask Creality what that was about, though, because that was a bit strange. Um, as I say, it was almost like... Uh, hang on a second. I want contrasting color 
on first layers for copyright stamps and logos. Step it up, Creality. You went for Max. Awesome. Just came back. Uh, how about a budget print, end of three Max Neo, uh, most expensive one, same file on both printers. Um, what do you want, Ender 3 Max? Ender 3 Max. Uh, what have I got here? I don't think I've got an Ender 3 Max. I'll tell you what I have got. Um, bah, 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 bah. I've got the Creality S, um, the 5S. I've got the Ender 3 S1. I've got um, a modified Ender 3. Pretty much, I've got a V2 Ender here, which is literally caked in dust. And uh, the CRM4. And the Creality Belt Printer. Oh, and the um, Tripod's favorite, the CR6. Yeah, that's right, the CR6. Um, I'm happy to do some comparisons. I'm happy to run it. If this is something I'm going to do, not every day, but some days, um, S1 will do. All right. So let's do this then. Tomorrow, um, let's try that tomorrow. Let's, let's, do, let's do something with that tomorrow then. Um, I haven't had that out of the box or doing anything with it for quite some time, actually, since the review. Um, no reason to not have that. Let's just see if this is doing anything yet because something weird was happening with this. And they have done an upgrade on the K1 just a couple of days ago. Um, uh, can you take a picture of the AI control interface? Did you click this? Hmm. Um, Creality are messaging me, and they are asking if I clicked. Yes, I did click it under calibration. So they're asking me if I clicked ca calibration, and I did click calibration. And I know they're watching. And the K1 is now um, on and offline. Okay, so I'm getting an upload fail description network send failure. So again, that could be my internal network. I'm not going to completely blame USB drive inserted. Let's give you a slightly better view while I'm uh, chomping away at the bit here. What do you want, top? There we go, we'll go with that one. Love my S1 Pro. Uh, it's a bench cruiser compared to these Lambos. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess if you're in a hurry, right? You're going to get stuff printed a lot faster. I don't know. Yeah, we got a cyclic crash on the K1. That's kind of annoying. Um, so, there's only one thing for it, isn't there? Um, let's... remove a couple of things from here so this stream is going on slightly longer than I had originally expected I thought this would be an open and closed job with this however We're not QVC. Oh, no. That one. We're not QVC. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the K1 that's glitching at the minute, move him out of the way. Uh, 
And I am going to have to shoot for into a meeting shortly. So we'll just power this up real quick and then we'll get ready to rumble. Let's go, go, go. I love QVC when I was growing up. It was a good show. Right, let's plug this bad boy in. We're just going to quickly then change out. Okay, I should plug this in. Here we go. Just change out the filament on this very quickly. Get it heated up. <laughs> Wrong department, Jerry, unfortunately, mate. go that will be the wrong department unfortunately my friend so no stress it is what it is we got one that's glitching i still want to get on and print these things so i'm in a fortunate position to have the original k1 here with me Lock it into place, pop him on, and he's good to go, I think. Let's go to USB drive. So it could always be the USB that's corrupted because that's now stopped. And now it's okay, 40 USB. Right, that's interesting. So it wasn't the printer after all. It looks like it's a possible. 40 USB situation there. This is part and parcel to fault finding there, right? This is what this is what we do. This is the reason that we, we do what we do because um, let's do a format on that card because it's obviously got some corruption. Uh, tripods just like to tweet that I, uh, I put out and again as I say another youtuber you're gonna to want to check out I say another youtuber like I'm another content creator that you might want to check out is uh, Nathan builds robots he's a he's a cool guy I met him at at Murph that's his face I'm keeping that on my person at all times now um, he's a good guy I like what he does he's got a lot of good content and uh, he builds robots as well so kind of like me so let's get back to slicing this file again. Let's go into the preview. Uh, in fact, I may even be able to do land printing with this one. Let's just check it out. No, that doesn't look like it's liking that very much. Let's go to export to local. Let's go to Jacko Lantern. Let's burn it to no name. The weird thing about any of this stuff is though, like, so I had a few problems with uploading stuff yesterday and Wi-Fi and LAN and all that kind of stuff. Literally, as soon as I got back down to my desk downstairs, absolutely fine again. So again, it could be bandwidth. It could be any amount of issues that it could be there. Need marketing, not devs. Uh, did you see that Creality is giving a year's way of premium K1 to Max owners? I know this because yesterday we were talking about it. Exactly, we were talking about that because we were talking about me being wrong about uh, cloud printing on this machine and how it works and yada, yada, yada. And weirdly, like freakishly weirdly, um, Creality are now giving away a year's... Uh, uh, okay, that's good. Uh, a year's, free, as you say, a year's free um, premium subscription to uh, the Creality Cloud with this printer. And the way that you do that and the way that you you, uh, you basically follow the link, on your printer there's a unique ID number. And you get that from the Creality Cloud. Punch that in, 
job done. I did it myself this morning. And uh, yeah, it's all good. Very, very happy. So let's give this a go again. It might completely be a faulty USB stick. USB driver inserted. Let's have a look. So we're going to get this printed. Then I'm going to have to wrap it up for today because I've got a couple of meetings to go into afterwards. I think that USB, yeah, so it's, it's crashing again. Okay, I'm going to leave the USB out of this. I don't know if I've got a spare one just knocking about. Let's have a quick look. Any spare USBs? Have we got any spare ones? I think that's going to be a faulty USB. As soon as I plug it in, it starts misbehaving and doing some sort of cyclic crash. I'll be two minutes. What's that? Say again? I can't hear you. Oh, it has been, yeah, it's been funny. Sorry, my, um, I've got a meeting to run into in literally 15 minutes' time. So I'm going to call it quits here, guys. If you've got any questions real quick before I go, um, I'll get this running. If you want to follow up and see what's going on on Twitter, I can do that as well. Uh, I've got a meeting about tax now, so that's going to be fun. Uh, anyone that have recommended for engineer-type YouTubers to follow? Um, teaching Tech. Um, and Teaching Tech is another curious one. If you know who Teaching Tech is, a guy called Michael Laws. Uh, I also keep this picture of Michael Laws in my pocket as well, um, just in case I ever need to show anybody. So um, there you go. Picture of Michael Laws from Teaching Tech. Nathan from Nathan Builds Robots in the other one. So you never know. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to try and do this again tomorrow. We'll get this working. I'll literally come offline. If you follow me on Twitter, it's at Sam Prentice. If you follow me on Instagram, it's at the real Sam Prentice. You've been awesome as per usual. Thank you very much for joining me. We're going to get 